Kenny here with Gardening Simplified. It's January 31st and we're going to do a little fig update right here in the middle of the week. We've been uh, propagating these figs. Uh, some had started early. Oh wait, this isn't a fig. Oh, we've been doing some propagating too of some pomegranates and here's one. But these figs here, some of these were started right at the beginning. This is 11, 13. Uh, this one here is 11.22, so it's been a little bit later. And we got tags all over here. Let's see. This this one here was 11.13. But anyway, we've got some of these figs that we've already pot them up to a bigger pot. But lo and behold, these uh, roots are starting to come out the, the side. Now, they're not liking it, it dry. That's not a really good one there, but we can see this one here is coming out. And they're getting dry being I brought them in here uh, yesterday, but <clears throat> I had to uh, go pick up another load of uh, compost. And so I could uh, make me some potting mix. And I just got that today. Now I'm going to move these from one gallon up to the two gallon uh, pots. And uh, so let me kind of get into this. I have my compost. Now with this mixture now, I'm just going to mix compost. And uh, I've got some perlite in here. I want to make sure it gets aerated. And uh, I'm going to take and uh, add some fertilizer to this. And then I'm going to pot these up. So let me get into this. I'm mixing my uh, compost up here. Now it is kind of moist because it's raining today. It was really a nasty day to go out to get compost. I got a little azomite here. I'm going to mix a, a little bit in here with this. Give it some other minerals. We'll see if it makes it do any better. Normally I, I haven't. I put a lot in the garden. But what the heck, why not put some in the figs? And also, if I find my teaspoon, tablespoon, uh, I've got a bag of, with some uh, mycorrhizae in it, and I'm going to uh, put a good tablespoon of that in there. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's supposed to, encourage root growth so and i don't think it's got to take too much to encourage some root growth in there we're going to hope that this will stay together enough to uh pot this up easily and we'll just uh, start with whatever we got first here that's looking pretty good and it's looking like it really wants to get out of this container now we're going to hope that this stays together uh, I haven't watered this in the last few days, and so ho hopefully it's got plenty of water. It's definitely, it must have enough roots that it's, that it's sticking to the side. And uh, as you can see, there are a lot of roots on this thing. What we're going to do is try to pretty much keep it intact. Uh, normally, I'd make a thing and then put the, just take and stick it in it. But a lot of times, when they get in these bigger containers, they tend to want to uh, fall apart. Now, if they got really good roots, which that does, it does help it to stay together. Uh, And we're going to kind of push this down on the sides. Uh, we're not really wanting to bury it any deeper than it is. Now, sometimes I find a bigger stick. This is wood chip compost. So, uh, And some might ask, well, what do you fertilize with? Well, it's going to depend on what you're 
your conditions are of what you're putting in there. Sometimes people use a compost, that, a uh, sort of compost. It's going to have a lot of nutrients in it. Or they'll use a potting mix, uh, and it's a lot of them's got uh, pre-fertilized, time-release fertilizer. Now, if you wanted to, which I'm not going to be concerned with it, but if you wanted to, you could uh, take and of straighten this up where it grows more upright. But as you can see, this other limb is coming out there. It's got another one coming out right here at the ground. <coughs> so we're not going to be too concerned with uh, the positioning. The main concern is going to be, let's get this thing into a bigger pot. You see why that's kind of hard to come out. These roots, <coughs> they kind of latch onto the side. And so, uh, it makes it a little difficult when you're potting, potting one up and it's got a lot of roots. The more roots, the harder it is to come out, whether it's in your solo cup or whether it's in your uh, cup here. Now, this is a black mission. Black missions usually have <clears throat> a good root system to them. Now, I'm going to have to mix up some more mix here. And I like to mix that over here in my tub, which is off camera, but <clears throat> for... For most of it, because when I start stirring around, sometimes I get a little more messy. I'll get the biggest part done here, and then I'll bring it over there and do the rest. But we're going to do this the same way. We're going to uh, put us a good tablespoon of mycorrhizal, and uh, we're going to put a little bit of uh, azomite in there. And we're just going to mix these up. Now, I was putting some cinnamon in my mix because it's a, a bactericide and a fungicide kind of. But I got thinking if I put uh, mycorrhizal in there, and I believe that's a, a fungus, that I didn't know if cinnamon would affect it. So I'm, I decided I wouldn't do that. But anyway, we're going to... Do this one more time. <clears throat> it's not like it's a complicated thing. We're just going to put that in there. We're going to set this plant, make sure we've got it at kind of at the right height we want it. And that will depend on you. <clears throat> and then we're going to try to, I hate squeezing the side because it, it makes it to where it, uh, kind of loosens up the, the mix. And as you can see, it did loosen it some, but you can see these roots. It's just uh, massive. Now, this thing was uh, started uh, November 13th. So, so it's been in there a little bit. It's not been in there uh, too awful long. Uh, being where it's about two and a half months and it's and it's really got this could go in the ground but it's way too cold right now for me to uh, think about putting these in the ground because I'm going to end up freezing the roots off so so what I've been doing is kind of protecting them I got an unheated greenhouse and I do my best to add a little bit of heat and I do some row cover to keep these from uh getting too cold and freezing and as you can see i've been doing a pretty good job so far i just hope it keeps up but we're going to uh we're going to continue to watch and as these things starts growing the roots out of the pot that's telling me that they're they're uh really getting established and and a lot of these are in fact, I think most of these, I don't know, we'll have to see, are going to go in the ground here. Some some I probably will sell, uh, maybe carry them to the farmer's market or something. But as far as uh, most of them, I hope they, they go in the ground. Because a lot of the varieties, some new varieties, and I don't want to get rid of any new varieties. And right now, there's certain varieties that I want more of, so. So I've just, and, and the black mission is one. I don't know that I really remember eating the fig, uh, but uh, I believe I did, and I believe it was, it was really tasty. 
but anyway i'm going to uh pot up the other five of these and as you can see uh, they're going to be happy in these bigger pots because they kind of if it if i left them there much longer uh say until it got warm enough they'd really get root bound and i don't need them root bound i want them to be steadily searching out have plenty of nutrients and grow uh as much as they can can in this first year and a fig now down here in the south I, I watched a video the other day and they talk about people that they always try to grow things that don't grow you know uh apples it's hard to find an apple that's going to do good down here in the south i have uh, a few different varieties of apple trees i've got one or two apples but they really weren't ripe and it was uh have to get them a little early because the squirrels or something like that uh, was going to get them. You could grow peaches. Uh, my luck hadn't been that good with peaches. And some people might say, I don't like figs. Well, unless you've tasted uh, the more than 3,000 varieties of them, uh, then you don't know if you really don't like figs. You might not like a particular type of fig. Now, some people have an issue with texture. And I can see where that is, and that might affect you on all of them. But these figs that I have are sugar figs, honey figs, berry figs, mixture of any of those. Some, you know, some might taste like strawberries, some might taste like cherries. Fig, all the figs don't taste the same. There's a lot that are real similar, and there are many that are not even close. So this is why I encourage you. If you live up north, there's a lot of varieties that you can plant in the ground. Uh, you know, and they take the cold really, really well. When you get real far up north, uh, you've got to be real selective in your varieties. Uh, but anybody that's down here, uh, zone seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, you, you ought to have an excellent time growing figs. And I put trees in the ground at the start of the year, and I'm eating figs uh, from the middle to the end of the year. just depends on which variety. Some are better than others. But if you want to continue to follow around, follow along on this journey on propagation, well, of course, just hit that subscribe. If you aren't subscribed, hit the bell so you'll be notified. Uh, click all. And, of course, give it a big thumbs up. That helps this video so more, more people see it. Uh, and as always, uh, grow something. <laughs>